Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Arne Sinadella, and he is the founder of Spark Investment Group, and he is an amazing gentleman, and he, he has a passion about helping others, and he really loves to inspire people about longevity. You know, how do you set up your goals for a prosperous 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 life in the future? How do you, you know, set up everything so you could live a happy, healthy, and productive life? Looking at our mindset, looking at our health, looking at the way we do things in life. How does that affect us in the golden years? You know, he talks about how to keep your golden years golden. You know, we want to live a life that's going to be happy, healthy, productive, and he's going to tell you how to do all these things and, and as he goes along. So I'm really excited to have R on the show. He has great tools, strategies, ideas on how to help you live the life you want to live as we go along and we prosper into our golden years. So Arn, it's so it's I'm just so happy to have you on the show. It's an honor to have you on the show. Tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah. Well, thank you for the warm introduction, Stacy. I really appreciate it and pleasure to get to know you. So um Happy to be here. Uh, my name is Arn Sinadella, and uh, kind of a typical middle class, middle income American upbringing. Uh, school was important. So uh, went to high school, college, grad school, got a degree in physical chemistry, of all things, from the University of Michigan. Um, thought I wanted to be a professor or perhaps a research scientist. Uh, but that isn't what I ended up doing. So I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, down on the San Francisco Peninsula before it became Silicon Valley. Uh, and as I was finishing up my graduate work at Michigan, uh, I wanted to return to the Bay Area, kind of where I grew up. And my father had a residential brokerage business. And he said, well, come on out, get your license and I'll put you to work. And about three year, three weeks later, loaded up the car, drove back to the Bay Area, had no idea what I was getting into. It wasn't like this was some grand plan. Uh, it was about a five or 10 minute call with my dad. And uh, that started my real estate career. And I've now been in the real estate business 46 years. I'm 69 years old. And uh, real estate's provided me a really nice life. I enjoy the business and I'm active today, even at the age of 69. Um, and that's kind of how I got into it and happy to discuss more. You know, I, I love before we spoke, you really brought up the topic about how important mindset and health is when, if you really want to have a successful life, whether you're in your mid twenties or you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, if you're going into your golden years, you really have to start off with a healthy mindset and keep yourself active and really look at life from a certain perspective. You know, as we go along in life, we're noticing that the longevity in life has been increasing. And, you know, I think a lot, a lot of it has to do with the way we think now, the way we look at life, the way we incorporate fitness into our life and we make it a priority, you know, and these are, I know from what we were talking about before, you know, you had some really strong views about this. And I, I want you to just share what, you know, the, with the public and our listeners, you know, some of the things that you think are very important in order to, in order to have a prosperous and healthy, happy life. Yeah. Um, so uh, I always say it's a good life. Uh, it's not perfect, and sometimes a little rain must fall, but on balance, uh, I think we should all be thankful we're here and we're having this experience, and so uh, as life expectancy through medical advances, through changes in society, I mean, I remember when I was a kid, everybody smoked cigarettes, and now very few people do, so uh, there's been a mindset shift around health. Uh, medical advances, and so we're living longer. And so then the question really becomes, how do those extra years actually add to the totality of your life? How do they add to the number of enjoyable years you have? Because if you're not healthy, uh, it's hard to have a good attitude. It's hard to enjoy your day-to-day -day life. So I think the notion of maintaining your physical 
health and fitness and paying some attention to that provide so many benefits. Uh, I, I go to the, the fitness, the rec center every day, and I can tell you after about 30 minutes, if I get a little sweat on and I'm breathing a little bit, uh, I feel pretty good. Any problems I have have kind of disappeared and you just kind of work through it and it brings you back into the present. Um, so I think there's a big connection between the mental, physical, and emotional. And, and if you take care of that, then you've got uh, a, a good chance to have a happy long life. And then, of course, the other part of it is financial. You have to take care of your financial aspects of your life. As we all know, it's expensive to live, it's expensive to maintain even a reasonable lifestyle. And so as we're living longer, I think we all know Social Security isn't going to uh, pay all the bills and wouldn't provide a very rich, comfortable life. And so how do you go about augmenting or supplementing that income? And that's through investing. And I've done it through real estate. So I think you take care of the financial house, you take care of your physical, mental and emotional house, and then the sky's kind of the limit. And then you're in a position where you have options and choices. You've kind of done the hard work in your life. And now uh, I often think about life being a three act play, you know, maybe zero to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90. And so after decades of effort, and hard work raising a family, there should be some payoff. And the payoff is kind of those golden years where you can follow your passions, uh, be financially secure, and also be healthy enough to enjoy it. So uh, yeah. I've kind of set my life up that way. And uh, I'll be 70 in six weeks. And I'm excited about what the next 20 years or whatever time I have here, I want to make the, the best I can. I love it. I love your mentality. You have such a great mentality and that's so important. And I think, you know, there's so many things we can tap into right now, but let's tap into the business aspect because first I want to go over, you know, there's so many people that struggle, you know, they have, you know, they're in all different types of industries and, you know, with the inflation, with how much everything costs, they even, you know, I'll give you an example. You're, um, they came out with a statistic not too long ago. Your child, by the time your child reaches the end of elementary school, you've already spent $100,000 on your child. Just think of those numbers. Just think about that, you know, and think about having even just one more, more than one child. There is so much responsibility put on people in our today's society. And then you have your other expenses and, you know, people are, you know, trying to make ends meet. And it's so hard. Even people that are, you know, doctors and lawyers and have well-established positions, they have a, a hard time, you know, making ends meet because by the time they they make their money, by the time they pay their expenses, they're like, where did everything go? And, you know, I, I've heard so many people talk about investing and how they worked in, in different areas of the industry. Then they started to really invest in a smart way. And they, you know, and and they didn't, and, you know, some of them didn't know too much about investing. Some of them knew a lot about investing, but they had the guidance from the people who really knew how to guide them along. And they actually made a substantial amount of money where they were able to actually save money and put money away for their golden years. So they didn't have to struggle in their golden years. Because from my own experience, seeing my family when they hit their golden years, a lot of them struggled. They didn't have much. And it was it was sad. And some of them got sick. And some of them didn't even have money for assistant living. And the expenses of assistant living, some of them were veterans. And they still didn't have a lot of money. So when it comes to investing, I want to hear your input because you started out in real estate and then you went into investing and then you knew exactly, you learned the ins and outs of investing and you were able to, to make a, a living that was really um, substantial, was uh, that, that helped you so you could actually live comfortably now and you don't have to worry about 
the next years of your life. You know, that new journey, you could journey and enjoy, you know, instead of struggling. So I want to hear a little bit about what you did to actually gear yourself into a prosperable future. Yeah, uh, great question. And um, uh, one of the things my father taught me when I was just a young whippersnapper, about 23, he said to me, pay yourself first. And I go, well, what does that mean? Pay myself first. And basically what he was getting at is take 10% of every paycheck you get and put it in a savings account. So mm -hmm. the key is live below your means. Don't spend every penny that you make. Yeah. And whatever you're able to save and accumulate, that capital can then be invested. And right. it can invested in the stock market. It can be invested in real estate. Uh, I don't understand Bitcoin, so I'm not investing in Bitcoin. But if Bitcoin's your thing, give it a shot. But the point is living below your means when you're younger. And I know it's difficult. You mentioned uh, cost to a, uh, have a child till 12. Well, let's add in college education. And that's a whole different yeah. thing. But, yeah. the, but the fundamental is Try to live below your means, accumulate capital, and then invest that capital. And if you can start doing that when you're 25, 30, 35, and have that capital work for you 30, 40 years, by the time you get to be 60, 65, you are going to have a happy, uh, you know, a sizable nest egg. The way I always kind of look at it is the dollars that I have invested could be in the stock market, could be in real estate. The way I look at it in my mind is they get up every morning, put their suit and tie on, or get their lunch pail, get their tool belt, and they go to work for me. So those dollars are earning income for me when I'm not having to do anything about it. So when you invest, those dollars go to work for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the other thing I would say is living longer, uh, I think we all understand uh, you can't live off principle. So if you accumulate a certain capital, certain amount of cash, net worth, assets, uh, at the age of 60, 65, you can't simply just start living off that principle because you'll go through it quicker than probably you're going to live. And so one of the other keys as you get older is to produce additional streams of income that could be rental property, it could be dividends from stocks and bonds. Uh, there's a variety of ways. So not only do you want to keep growing your net worth, you want to keep producing income, but it's income that's not requiring you to show up at a job nine to five. And yeah. I think most people have discovered in quote unquote retirement, they need to have the same income as they did when they're working. So I think for individuals to have uh, be financially free and secure, you have to think of how do I generate the same kind of income I did when I did the nine to five, but now I don't want to do the nine to five, but I still need the income and investing is the answer to do that. Right. You know, there's so many things out there and, and people have, you know, people have excelled in investing and then people have been scammed in investing. Now, you know, how do you, you know there's so many things out there for someone, you know, for an individual who's worked hard all their life and they want to do invest in and they want to they want to be able to have, you know, a good an income at the end where they can live off what their investments, you know, live off their investments and live comfortably. You know, what do you look for when you're looking for good investments and you're looking for a good investor that you can trust? Yeah, that that's the sixty four million dollar question, Stacey. <laughs> uh, so 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 a couple things. Uh, I think rule number one is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So if somebody approaches you with an investment and oh, yeah, I'm going to double your money every two years. 
sorry, in my life experience, it doesn't work that way. So if you're approached by somebody who's promising the, the deal of the century, some <laughs> outlandish returns is probably not true. Um, the other thing I would say is, uh, as you accumulate capital to invest, don't put it all in on one deal or one asset class, right? So if you've saved 100,000 or 200,000 or whatever it is, you don't want to put all that in on one deal. You probably don't even want to put it all in on real estate. So I'm a big believer in diversification. So if you have a, a nest egg of investable cash, I would spread it out among stocks, mutual funds, bonds, real estate, because I think uh, uh, diversity of your investments provides some security. Um, I'm a real estate guy. I know real estate. Uh, I don't know the stock market. And so over time, I've developed a relationship with a financial advisor now over 20 years. Uh, and basically, he'll call me up every now and then go, hey, Arn, I think we should do this, this and that. I go, hey, Henry, I trust you. Whatever you think's best, go ahead. Um, so I think partnering with experts in the field in various asset classes is a good way because you could be a brilliant surgeon. That doesn't mean you know the stock market or you could be a brilliant attorney doesn't mean you know the real estate market. Uh, and of course, there's going to be a little trial and error. Uh, a lot of people will talk a good game, but you're really only going to know by interacting with them over time. And again, it's partnerships. Let them develop slowly. Again, the same idea about not going all in with one advisor or one person, perhaps yeah. allocate a little bit of capital and see what they do over the next six to 12 months. And if they do a great job, you can put in more. And if they don't, you're going to learn that. Uh, because I think the other thing with investing, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Uh, you want to be able to win more than you lose. Yeah. Uh, but the big thing is make your losses small not a mortal wound, right? If you make an investment and you lose 5%, you could live with that. You don't want to lose 80% of your investment. So protect the downside, uh, maybe give up a little bit on the upside. And I can tell you in my own life and experience in my real estate investing, if I can make about a 13, 14, 15% return annually, on my investments through real estate safely, I'm happy with that. I don't need to make 30% a year. Um, the way I sometimes describe it for sports fans, and I love sports, is I aim to hit line drive base hits with my investing. I don't swing for the home run. I don't swing from the grand slam, because when you do that, what happens? You strike out. And yeah. I think with investing, uh, what does Warren Buffett say? He says, rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. So as long <laughs> as you prefer, you know, preserve your capital and slowly and steadily grow it over a 10, 15, 20 year period, you're going to get ahead. And I find the people that get hurt get kind of caught up in a FOMO or some kind of greed mentality where they're going to make a score and it's going to be a once in a lifetime thing. That to me is danger. So just slow and steady, build that nest egg as you go. I like that. I think that's great advice. I think a lot of people I've seen get hurt because they, they, they have that, that thing where they think they're going to make, you know, greed takes over and they think they're going to make this investment of a lifetime and they put in 50% of, you know, whatever investment capital that they've endured. And then all of a sudden it doesn't work out. It crashes and, or, it, you know, whatever happens and they've just lost 50% of all their earnings. And, you know, that, that's a hard hit. 
And, you know, it, it's really like, like you said, I like the idea of really going in for the line drive and not going in, you know, trying to get a home run and thinking that, you know, you have to go in and have to do everything big because sometimes having big eyes could really, yeah. you know, really, you know, make you hit a, hit a, you know, get into a pitfall, you know, yes. uh, you know, now you've done really well for yourself and, you know, in order to do well for yourself and in order to have the energy that you do, you know, is there a certain type of mindset? Is there a certain type of way that you think that really helps you, you know, be able to have all this energy and you have a clear focus and a clear mindset and you know exactly the, the right things to do to get you to the point where you are today? Yeah. So, uh, I've made mistakes. Okay. But they've been little mistakes and I've lived to fight another day. So investing involves edgy, you know, learning from your mistakes and getting better. Uh, so, uh, I have kind of a daily routine that sets me up. Uh, I get up, uh, Maybe this is too much information, but I have two pieces of toast, two coffees, and then I head to the rec center. And so mm -hmm. every morning I get to the rec center, uh, do the usual fitness things, but I also do yoga and this and that. And so for me, that kind of morning ritual sets me up for a good pace the rest of the day. It kind of gets the body and mind going you yeah. have time to kind of contemplate what do you need to do today and what to go about it. Um, and then I think the other thing is for me and through real estate, I've been able to do it. Um, I think you have to have a little bit of pleasure and fun in every day, right? So yeah. there, there has to be activities that it could be recreation, it could be going to coffee with a girlfriend or, you know, whatever it happens to be, activities yeah. that bring you joy every day. You can't just grind five days in a week and then go, oh, on the weekend, I'm going to have fun. I think you have to build into your daily calendar some kind of recreation or socialization where you have fun, uh, whether it's a regular date night with your significant other, you know, kind of a dinner every week with some close friends, uh, yeah. just set up your day-to-day -day life where you do get some enjoyment because you're able to recharge. And of course, when you're able to have fun and enjoy your life and go get a nice meal or go to the ballet and have a, a really nice experience, that kind of confirms the, 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 the value of all the hard work you put in to get there. So it's that kind of positive feedback that my efforts are leading to an enjoyable life. So I kind of do it on a day-to-day -day basis, build in productive activity, but also some time and recreation, and then also just some downtime where you're just chilling. And then I'd say, also try to have a nighttime routine where you kind of shut off and kind of slow down and get prepared to have a good night's sleep. Because I think we all know uh, if you don't have a good night's sleep, the next day is probably going to be a little rough. So if you can find yeah. a way to create good, solid sleep, you're just going to wake up the next day, rest it. And then that just all builds on each other. Right. Right. I love that. I love that so much. You know, I, I noticed that a lot of times, you know, one of the main thing that plays in life is stress. And I'm sure you've had, you know, your ups and downs where, you know, things have gotten really good. And then all of a sudden, you know, you've been hit with an obstacle here and there. And, you know, it's all the way we handle it. And because a lot of times people will, you know, stress could actually lead, you know, I always say it 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. You could take stress home and it affects the family, it affects your relationships, you know, it helps, you know, it affects your work base. You know, how are some of the things in life that you utilize that helped you when you were hit with your ups and downs? And how did you cope with stress? Yeah. So uh, I think the the fitness routine helps, you know, if you get on the stationary bike and go hard for 30 minutes, yeah, I think your stress level will reduce a little bit. Uh, of course, you have to have 
those really close friends could be a spouse, but doesn't need to be a spouse. Somebody who kind of has your back can be your sounding board and support you uh, and also tell you the truth, right? If you're wrong, yeah. uh, you know, uh, my wife, Laura, she doesn't have any problem telling me when I'm wrong. And so <laughs> being open to that feedback uh helps you maybe reframe some situation that you're in right. um and 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 so you have to have people that you trust that that you know love and care for you and by interacting with them getting their support getting their input i think it helps work through problems um and then of course just kind of realize this too shall pass. So uh, what you're feeling right now is not going to be forever. It's an right. emotion you're going through. And then I think, of course, pay attention and try to eliminate the factors that cause stress. I would submit they're generally going to be repeating patterns in somebody's life and often right. it's financial. And so if you're constantly under financial pressure, it's hard to be very happy. It's hard to be a good friend. It's hard to be a good father, mother, daughter, brother, whatever. And yeah. so then maybe you have to look at what adjustments do I need to make to put my financial house in order that right. will eliminate that stress? So I think that's the other thing, obviously, deal with it when it comes up, but kind of evaluate what recurring factors cause this and what yeah. adjustments can you make in your life to, to eliminate or reduce the number of times those issues come up. I think that that's great advice. I really do. Because I think that's something that people struggle with on a daily basis, you know, like people, you know, especially when they have their own business and, or even if they don't have their own business and they're, and they're in a job, you know, those things kind of, you know, hit, hit home a lot for people. And it's very hard to, you know, cope with life when you are under a stress, you know, and, and learn how to cope with stress and learn how to overcome stress is so important. So many factors. And, you know, it, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, is, you know, we went over a lot of stuff today. Like, you know, you talked about how to make your golden years golden. I love that. I love how you, you worded that. So, you know, for people out there, it doesn't matter what age you are. You know, like I have friends that had started planning for their golden years in their 20s. And now they're my age and they are well set for their for their golden years because they started early you know a lot of times people don't think about starting so early or they don't just don't have the funds you know but they you know if the earlier you start planning for your golden years the better your life will be but a lot of times we don't think about that because it's so far ahead people don't even don't even really focus on that but the people i know that started planning early on are really, you know, they're they're doing really well for themselves and their future at in their golden years is going to be really a wonderful life because they have everything structured and they have their finances put in areas where when they get there, they're going to be set financially and they're not going to have to worry about a lot of things that other people worry about. And, you know, so what are some of the things you'd like to share with people, some advice you maybe want to give when it comes to actually making your golden years golden? Yeah, well, I, I think you hit, hit the nail on the head. Probably the key factor is, number one, just get started. You know, save money, invest it, no matter how small of amount. The sooner you get started, the better off you're going to be because over time, that money just compounds and continues to grow. Uh, so I think it's just uh, understanding uh, a little short-term sacrifice can lead to long-term benefits. So, you know, for me, uh, I drive a nice car. Uh, but I bought it in 2013. I've got 125,000 miles on it. It's still great. 
nice car, uh, nice SUV, no problem. Uh, but so I don't need a new car every three or four years. So I give up the thrill of having a new car every two or three years and the money I save gets invested and it provides a thing. So I think to the degree you can kind of, and I don't even want to use the word sacrifice because there's plenty of great things you can do that don't cost a fortune. Uh, so maybe instead of flying to Bali once a year, which is great, you know, you take a road trip to Southern California or to Florida and, you know, yeah. spend it there. Uh, so just kind of minimize your expenses now and that money you save can be put to work for you. And, you know, as you get older, issues come up, you don't have as much energy, maybe can't tolerate stress as much. And so, it, it, it's worth a little effort when you're younger to set it up a little bit better when you're older. And then your kids are growing and gone. You're not reporting to a boss. You can do whatever you want. And then you're in a position to kind of really create the life you want and maybe yeah. start taking up some things that you didn't have the time or money to do when you were younger because you worked the nine to five and you had to get the kids to school get them to their little league and dance recitals. Yeah. Uh, right. So it, you know, being a parent's a full-time job. And uh, uh, so once your kids are launched, now you have greater opportunity to kind of really follow your passions. I think that's great advice. Now, if, if you had to take some of the takeaways from what we talked about today in today's conversation, what are some things you'd really like to emphasize to people who are listening today? Um, I would say, think about, uh, a life expectancy into 90, 95, 100, and kind of think accordingly. And also think about, uh, how are you going to maintain income once you stop working your, your nine to five? So, uh, as we've kind of covered, you can't really live off principle. You can't spend your your, your nest egg. It's not going to last 20, 30 years. So you really need to think about how do I replace my W-2 income in my later years to maintain my lifestyle? Right. I love yeah. it. I love it. These are really important factors. I think a lot of people sometimes overlook these factors and then, you know, they're overwhelmed as they get older because they start they start having to plan things that they they should have been planning a long time ago. So now they have all these decisions they need to make and a lot of people get overwhelmed. And and then some people they don't make these decisions and then in their in their golden years they're struggling, you know, or, you know, they have all these things that should have been done that haven't been done. And, you know, it, it's really important to start looking at these things, I think, from an early age. And I, I, you know, a lot of people don't realize, but the sooner, the better, I think, you know, I definitely, definitely think, you know, like now, what are some of the services that you provide? Yeah. So, uh, I'm a real estate investor. I buy basically multifamily property, apartment buildings, and I do it through a syndication model where uh, I accept capital from limited partner investors, and uh, I may get 50, 100 investors together, and they each enter or invest some amount of capital to buy a four or five, six million dollar apartment building. And basically my team takes care of the day-to-day -day responsibilities of operating the asset. Uh, the limited partner investors don't have any day-to-day -day responsibility for the asset. Uh, we do all the heavy lifting to operate the apartment collect the rent, pay the bills, do the repairs, maintenance, do the improvements to the property. And in return, we send our investors quarterly distributions that come to their bank account via ACH. And then typically we hold these properties maybe five to seven years. And then when they're sold, the limited partner investors get uh, the majority, 75 to 80% of the 
profit in the property and my team, the general partner team gets a share of the profit, provided we perform and provide good returns to our investors. So we're professional real estate investors. My team has, uh, I have two other primary partners between the three of us. We have 75 years in the real estate business. Uh, we also invest our own capital in these deals. Uh, and basically the properties are operating well. It's called hands-off investing, passive investing, and it allows individuals to get the benefits of real estate without some of the headaches dealing with tenants, hot water heaters, repairs, you know, somebody not paying. So passive investing in real estate, we really love multifamily. Uh, I think most people understand we do have a housing shortage in this country, particularly a, a shortage of affordable housing. And so multifamily apartments fit right into that. There's going to be kind of a never ending demand for that. And so we're providing housing to people who need it and in return, providing our investors good returns. I think that's great. Now, where can people find your website? Yeah, so uh, my firm is Spark Investment Group. Website is investwithspark.com, no spaces, no dots. And I'm very active on social media, either Facebook or LinkedIn, either other under my individual name, Arn Sinadella, or Spark Investment Group. Uh, so please reach out. Happy to talk to you further about what we do. And if it's a good fit, we can continue the conversation. And if you just want to talk real estate and get my input, happy to do that too. Oh, that's amazing. You know, I think that's great because a lot of times, you know, people have made so much money. I, you know, I've known people by buying properties, by buying, you know, buildings. And, you know, it's, it's so nice if you have a group of, you know, that will take care of all the little things. I will, I'll, let's call them a little bit of annoyances, you know, like these are things that people dread to want to have to, because they already have all their other responsibilities. But when you could have, Precisely. yeah, yeah. When you can have a group of people doing that for you and you can just invest in the building itself and then later on I get a return, you know, that's, that's an amazing thing. You know, it, it's a great investment in my eyes. I think it's, it's a wonderful investment. You know, you have to you have to choose good operators to 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 invest with. And again, it's the same advice I gave earlier in the call. Uh, I don't want you to invest all your capital with me uh, if you like me or whatever. Invest a little bit, see how I do, and next year we'll have another investment. And if I've done good good by you, and you want to invest more, then great. So uh, uh, I do believe in diversification uh and uh protect yourself by kind of testing the performance of the teams you choose to invest with i love this this has been a great conversation arn i i really enjoyed our conversation you touched a lot of bases and and you know and i think what you're doing is great i think uh you know making an investment in real estate and being able to you know purchase a sh you know a specific amount and then have someone who you know will take the responsibilities the things that you know um that take time that take effort that take you know a certain amount of of money you know they're taking care of those those issues for you you don't have to worry about it and then you you know, in the end, you're you're making you're making capital off your investment, and you don't have to worry about all the little things involved. So, to me, that that's a great investment. You know, and I think I think what you're doing is great. I love the, the your whole idea, your mindset, how you take care of yourself, how you went from one, you know, from in your in your younger days to now, and how you you made such a nice lifestyle for yourself, and sharing those ideas, and and sharing you know what you've done through your own experience and how you got here today and now what you're doing to prepare for your golden years well you're actually there already you i'm in my golden years i'm living my best <laughs> life yeah i'm yeah. having fun and and helping others so it's all good yeah it's all good you know yeah. and, and it's been an honor to have you on this show i i love everything that you've talked about today 
Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure and an honor, and I hope you'll come back and we can talk some more. You've touched a lot of different things. You have a lot of knowledge in a lot of different areas, and it's been a pleasure having you on this show. Yes, same for me. Thank you so much, Stacey. Great to meet you. And yes, we'll keep in touch. Yes, you okay. have a great day. Thank you. Bye.